let's continue our discussion on various other departments of ITU which are responsible for executing specific tasks. The ITU T, T for telecom, is one of the most important parts of the ITU which is responsible to execute certain functions which are related to telecommunication networks as such. We'll look at the background first, which makes ITUT a necessity. Then we'll look at the mandate of it, and then we'll have certain successes which ITUT has been able to accrue over the years. Now, imagine the whole traffic of the internet, 90% of it is the submerged fiber optic cable based traffic that is traveling across various continents going into various countries. For instance, in Pakistan, we have the end point for the flag that is fiber laid around the globe and the CME V3 um, that is Southeast Asia, Middle East, Western Europe and recently the CME V4. Then we have the Transworld connectivity that allows us to connect to the rest of the world. Now, all this is taking place through the optical fiber cable. 90% of the total internet traffic is being carried on that fiber optic cable. Now, imagine there has to be some organization that should be responsible for overseeing the deployment and smooth functioning of it. Then, when it comes to the traffic in the core and the access side, it means from the ISP perspective, the routers which are connected, the internet service providers which are providing internet connectivity to the end users through the edge, the 100% of the traffic is being carried by these networks. We cannot think of any other form of connectivity through which the users are connected to the World Wide Web. Now, the interesting thing is that the access networks are very diverse in nature. We can imagine some kind of conformity to one standard in the backbone when it is based on fiber. So, fiber is the technology. So, ITUT was good enough to take care of uh, fiber optic based communication at the long haul. But when it comes to the access side, we have so much of variety, both in wired and wireless, that um, someone, some organization should be allocated this responsibility. For instance, on the wireless side, we have the 802.11, 802.16. On the mobile side, we have the uh, UMTS, CDMA, 2000, in, these are the data networks, um, 2G as the voice network, 3G, 4G, LTE, all these are the um, mobile wireless networks. Uh, then on the fixed side, we also have fiber optic cable on the access side. Uh, we have copper in the form of coaxial cable and the unshielded twisted pair UTP. Now, with such variety, there has to be some kind of standardization. Otherwise, the interfacing of so many access networks over one single internet is not possible. So ITUT, as the most important part of the ITU, is responsible to provide the broadband access and the transport. It means it actually has to make sure that the users are not only getting access to the network, but their traffic is also being carried over long haul in any kind of transport technology. On the access side, ITUT recommends the DSL technology because the DSL technology is based on the unshielded twisted pair. The unshielded twisted pair was the de facto. Uh, connectivity with regards to the plain old telephone systems, the PSTNs, 
uh, for the analog telephone um, telephony. Um, the variant of DSL, which is known as the ADSL or asymmetric digital subscriber line, it provides the fastest migration with the existing infrastructure from the low data rate to the broadband without huge investments. So it means that ITUT adopted DSL and later started providing standardized DSL in the form of ADSL. The very fact that ADSL using some underlying technologies provides high data rates much much higher of the of the order of megabits per second uh, from 64 kbps 128 kbps from the pstns and istns to the uh, hundreds of megabits per second so adsl is actually the de facto internet connectivity wherever the copper which is based on uh, uh, the utp based uh, copper is available if we look at the access side with regards to fiber, we have standardized fiber to the home, fiber to the curb, and fiber to the uh, doorstep access networks. It is nothing but an integration of the end to end fiber because at the core and on the long haul, we have fiber. But if you also provide fiber on the access side, it ensures that end-to-end -end highest data rate can be provisioned. Then there are certain standardization activities which are related to things which we are seeing to be developing in parallel. For instance, when we look at the broadband, one of the most important and obvious aspect of the broadband is the IP television. So using IPTV, we can imagine that different vendors, different service providers could use their own variants. So I, ITUT is responsible for making sure that a standardized, unified form of internet-based um, IPTV is provisioned. Then we are also seeing the emergence of machine-to-machine uh, -machine communication in which the end hosts or the um, two parties, the calling party and the call party in literal sense, are no more the human and another human, or for that matter, human interacting with the machine. It is a machine talking to another machine. This, in a layman's term, is, is known as the Internet of Things. Some people also call it the Internet of Everything. Now, ITUT also has to consider it as an obligatory mandate for its own self. Otherwise, the integration of the Internet of Things over the unified Internet based on NGN wouldn't be very smooth. So, ITUT takes care of that as well. Then, we know that a typical architecture we are most familiar with in the Internet is the uh, client server architecture. We have the client that sends requests and we have a server that replies to, the, to these requests. Now there's an understanding that a client makes some infrequent requests and on the basis of those requests the replies or the request services are made. A deviation or a digression from the typical client server architecture is the evolution of the cloud computing wherein the network itself acts like a cloud. It means now we are no more considering the computing devices to be sitting on the edge of the overall network. In fact, we, we believe that the new form of computing is where the network is itself playing an important part in computing on the go while the traffic is being carried between end hosts. So since it is related to the network now, no more an end-to-end -end phenomenon. For that, the cloud computing becomes important. Then we have the migration, the 
long awaited dream to move from the IP version 4 to IP version 6. Although it is the primary mandate of the Internet Society and the Internet Engineering Task Force, nonetheless, ITUT is also taking great interest in it and is ensuring that whatever technological advancements are taking place in this migration, in transit, nothing is disrupted and it turns out to be a smooth migration. So we see that with all these areas which are developing in parallel to the so-called telecommunication world, all these aspects are directly or indirectly related to ITU and specifically to ITUT. Uh, lastly, the ITUT is also responsible for making sure that the telecommunication authorities of the countries which are part of the United Nations are responsible to implement a consistent, transparent and uh, smooth technologically advanced solution for their own respective countries so that the international community or the international fraternity does not have isolated islands where one country is unable to communicate with another.